All right, thanks for joining us. Today we are going to be talking all about how to bring in a live guest with Skype. This is our learning session. It's a how-to, hands-on tutorial. We'll be doing another one on Zoom, so watch for that one coming at some point. Uh, but today I'm going to focus all about Skype. Uh, this is super important because uh, if you were just watching a show, we do our live shows every week on Thursdays, uh, and we bring in remote guests, and we use Skype to do it. We don't do it quite this way because we actually have one of those nice, all like all in dedicated Skype boxes. Uh, it's basically a, a talk show box from New Tech. There's other ones made by QuickLink. They're basically, you know, several thousand dollars and they give you really high quality audio and video in and out. So if you're willing to go um, spend the money, that's the, probably the best way to do this. But if you don't have the money, you could set this up just the way I'm showing you either on your computer or on a second computer that you might have lying around It's a, um, and run some through a capture card or do a desktop capture. But let's start with just on your computer. How do you do this all on one machine? First of all, number one rule for bringing in a guest with Skype and doing it in Wirecast and, and producing a live uh, show with Wirecast is you need the bandwidth, right? You've got to not only be pulling down your guest's Skype feed, but you also need to be um, encoding and pushing out your broadcast. So your computer's going to be doing more work uh, just from a decoding side and from an encoding side, but it's also your bandwidth is going to be pulling down and pushing up audio and uh, video content as well. So just make sure you've tested this. Um, make sure you test ahead of time. Uh, make sure your guest is, you've, you've prepped with them or practiced with them at least once or twice just to iron out any problems. You also want to make sure your guest has good audio, good video, and good lighting. So all of those things are sort of prerequisites to what I'm about to show you. Assuming you've done your testing and you've got everything kind of worked out, then this is the process that you'd walk through to bring in your Skype guest into Wirecast for a remote call. So I'm going to show you right here. Um, now, what's most important about this is install Wirecast, download it, install Skype. And then there's usually a pretty good order to do this in. So um, I'm going to show you first. I know this seems a little odd, but we're actually going to launch Wirecast first. And the reason we're going to do that is because we want to set up our uh, sort of virtual camera, which is how we're going to feed our guest back what the is currently being aired on the broadcast. So in other words, this gives them a direct view in their Skype window and they can see exactly when they're on camera and when they're not on camera because obviously during a whole broadcast or show it may not, there may be times when your guest isn't on the screen and they won't know that. They won't know when like, oh, I'm on camera, I've got to talk or oh, I'm not on camera. Um, and that's how, since you're doing all of that mixing in Wirecast, then you want to feed that feed, that program mix into Skype as a camera source. And the way you do that is through the output menu and the virtual camera out. Virtual camera just means a fake camera, a software camera. Wirecast creates a, a, a virtual camera on your machine that basically tricks other software programs into thinking it's just a webcam you plugged in. In this case, though, it's your whole program audience mix. It's what your audience is going to see. It's what you're streaming out to Facebook or YouTube or anywhere else. So we're going to start that. I set it at 720. I don't like to go above 720 because that's kind of the hard limit for a lot of these programs. Um, but you have other outputs. If you first, you know, just have lower bandwidth, you may want to start with one of these other sizes. Um, but 720 is good for me. And I'm not going to do audio. I don't necessarily recommend the virtual camera, sorry, virtual microphone, because what this does is it feeds any of your program audio back to the guest as well. And guess what's in your program's audio or if you're doing an interview show? Well, your guest's audio is in your program audio and you don't want to feed your guest's audio back to themselves because they don't want to hear an echo of themselves. Um, so it's confusing. You should feed a separate microphone source, just your voice. Um, and if you're really tricky, you can do all this mixing and send a mix minus and all that stuff. But uh, for super simple, straight up, just send a, just hook in a second microphone. Super easy. So we started the virtual camera. Uh, you can tell that the virtual camera is working because you know you've got the system CPU and Wirecast starts giving you some output statistics. And if all goes well, we'll see this in Skype. And we'll actually see it reversed. So next, it's a good time to launch Skype. So I'm going to just launch Skype here. Okay, that's going to load into my Skype thing and the next or Skype window. And I'm going to head up to my preferences and I'm going to select, oh, pull this over. I'm going to select and just make sure the audio and video is working the way I want it to. 
So in Skype, I'm going to make sure the correct microphone is set, and then I'm seeing audio meters. That's working great. And then um, I can choose how I want to hear the guest back. Um, in my case, I do probably want to hear them through the C Media speakers, so you guys can hear them as well for now. And then the camera source is where you'll see this Wirecast virtual camera. And this wouldn't pop up unless you'd already started it. You might see it, but it might not be active. So that's why we start Wirecast first. And because I can tell it's working, I actually see the Wirecast output screen. And if I put something else or a camera or a slide or any of my program content in there, it will change automatically because this is actually a live feed from Wirecast of this screen, of this shot. Um, and it just so happens it's the live broadcast. Is it backwards? Yes, it's backwards. But it's just backwards that way for you. It's not what your guest will see. Your guest will see the other way around. This is actually so that if you're looking at yourself, because technically this camera is supposed to be pointed at you in, in these conferencing programs. If you're looking at you, and you raise your right arm, you want to see the you know, the you on the screen lifting your arm on the same side. That's why I often get mixed here, because when I look at myself, my right is actually the dude up there's right, but it's it goes left. So when it's mirrored, it converse, it, it kind of confuses that. Skype and other programs like Skype reverse it, so it makes it easier for when you're monitoring that. But don't worry about it. It's actually, it's not an issue unless you're looking at the Skype feed, and your guest will see it just the normal way. Okay, so we're good. We've got our audio. We've got our video. Everything's working. It's time to call. And I'm going to call Jo Yi. She is awesome. She works in our support department here. And she is standing by, hopefully, to take a call. Let's call her up. All right, Jo Yi, are you there? Awesome. All right, Joe Yi. Well, thanks for helping me out with this demo today. Uh, so if no you problem. can <laughs> appreciate it. Are you busy over there? I know uh, you've got a lovely uh, view from really. there. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to show people real quick um, how to screen capture their Skype feed, which is um, coming in th uh, through my Skype window in Wirecast real quick. So Joe Yi, just hang on for a second while I show people how to do a screen All right. capture. All right. Hang, in, hang tight there. All right, so you can see that as this goes into the background, the little like handy Skype floating window pops up. Move this wherever you like. It's not going to be really relevant to, I'm just going to move it off screen to another display I have here. But in Wirecast, you're going to want to bring in your guest through um, what's called the screen capture tool. So we're going to head into here, screen capture. And then you're going to want to choose uh, the different type of capture types you want. So a couple ways to do this. One is if you have more than one monitor and you're not using all that real estate, you can full screen the Skype call on a second monitor and choose monitor capture. Because I'm doing everything on one monitor, I'm going to just choose a, sec a different type of capture. I'm going to choose window. So from window, I'm then going to select uh, an application window that's open. And you can see if I click on select, moving a little fast here, choose select window or monitor and I can point Wirecast to capture the correct window or application that we're talking about. So you can see a list of all the applications that are currently open. At the bottom here is Skype. And then I have a list of different ones. And current call is definitely the, the window that I want to capture. So I'm going to hit OK. And then um, actually what I might want to do is maybe I'm going to do application Skype window. Let's try that one. So that was actually the mini monitor. There it is. So there's the full window. So I'm going to capture that and hit OK. And there's the application window in the background. And what's cool about this is that Wirecast can capture this window and what's in it and um, the Joey's call without with even while it's being occluded by me on the screen. So it's actually just looking behind Wirecast and capturing just this window no matter where it is, right? OK, so now we've got the full screen. And the only problems that you're noticing maybe is that we've got all this um, uh, sort of off uh, camera stuff that we don't want, like the application interface. So we're going to crop that out. So I'm going to head in and just do a quick crop here in Wirecast. We're going to cut the sort of the crop right there. And we're going to choose, choose the left and just crop that down. Um, and I'm not going to be super precise here, but you can take your time with this when you're ready. And then hit the crop off the top bar right there. Then I can take this, her shot in Wirecast, and just uh, scale to fit or stretch to fit. 
and make sure it's full screen. And now we have a nice full screen shot. The last piece of this is the audio. Um, and I want to cover that real fast. I kind of skipped over that in the output, sorry, in the uh, screen capture stuff. But you'll see in this shot, we choose whether or not we want to capture audio in the screen capture. And in this case, we probably do if the audio is coming through our built-in headphones or our computer speakers. So if that's how you're getting the audio, if that's how you're hearing um, your guest, then you need to capture that audio as well. So keep that in mind um, that you need to hit capture and we're gonna choose capture audio. And then the last thing we wanna do is because we're capturing the headphones, we don't want to monitor the audio capture. This will keep you, if you turn off the monitor button, this will keep you from getting that echo, infinite echo, and it'll just keep going and going. So turn that off, and then you'll be able to hear a guest. Wirecast will be able to hear a guest, but Wirecast isn't going to hear itself hearing your guest. So that's, if you check this, then you will, Wirecast will hear itself, and then now you're gonna get a loop, an audio loop. So turn that off, um, and then you should be good to go. So we've basically captured, done a screen capture, um, and then we are bringing them in. And then finally, Joe Yi should see when she's on camera. So yeah, now she yeah. sees herself in Skype. And then we also have me, if we bring in a webcam or camera here, let's see if I have a little capture device here I can add. So then I add myself, whoops, if I'm actually on target here. Let's make sure this is coming in from the correct. So I'll plug in my, my actual camera audio here. Um, let's do. Okay, I don't know if this will work or not, but let's say I have a picture of me or if this is working correctly. Um, so Joey, if this my camera was set up, you'd see, uh, I'm gonna full screen this. So then she would see this. So you seen color bars on the Skype return call? Yep. All right, so now Joey, you know exactly when you're on camera and when you're not, because you're seeing everything the viewer sees. And that's how why we use the Wirecast virtual camera to feed into something like Skype. All right, and that's pretty much it, you guys. That's how you would capture a guest coming in, capture their audio, uh, and not get an audio loop, and then also allow your guests to be able to see what's on camera and when they're on camera so they could see the same thing your, your audience sees. Uh, now, of course, they could always watch on wherever you're broadcasting, but that might be a little delayed. So if they're watching, oh, I'm on camera, and they watch that on Facebook, well, that's probably already eight to 10 seconds to, they've already been on camera for eight to 10 seconds by that point. So that's not really the best monitor for them to know when they're on screen or when they're not. Joe Yi, uh, you have been great. And do you have any support <laughs> questions? Uh, sorry, not support questions, any support tips for people who need more support with this type of thing? Um, not necessarily, I mean, it's a pretty easy setup. If you're having issues, um, it might be the version of Skype you're using, but I mean, you can always submit a case and ask us about that. But it's relatively easy, like you just showed everyone. Cool. Well, uh, you can always submit a support ticket to Joe Yi and the team at telestream.net slash support. And Joe Yi, thanks so much for helping me do this tutorial. No problem. All right, I'm going to hang up now. Bye-bye. All right, bye. All right, guys, that's it for the tutorial and the learning session. I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, and we'll be doing more learning sessions each week um, after our Wirecast Live show on Thursdays. Uh, so you can tune in to watch them live. And um, that wraps it up. I'm going to stick around. If you guys have a few questions, I'll take those in the chat. Um, but for the on-demand version later, we will just kind of cut this part out of the video. So um, hope that was helpful, you guys. All right, let me check in just to make sure I'm getting all the comments. I'm going to refresh here. And <laughs> Jen Lerner said she was glued to the live show. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> all right, glad uh, that this was a helpful tutorial for you, Jen. Um, this is exactly how you do it. Um, and we'll be doing more on how to bring in live views with like Zoom and some other ones. Ba principles are basically the same no matter what you're doing, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, and we also uploaded a bunch of new tutorials to our YouTube page. So if you guys are looking for more stuff, our, um, some guys in our support and sales 
uh, department uh, have done a bunch of cool new practical tips and tutorials for little things like this. So I would check those out at Wirecast Tube. All right, so let me jump out into the comments and just check Facebook, make sure you guys uh, let's refresh here, click on this. All right, I'm just pulling up your comments, guys, on Facebook. And Mix Minus is a major necessity, says Todd. It absolutely is. Uh, you don't want that audio loop happening. There's another way to avoid it. If you want, you can actually go, and I can show you real quick here. Again, we'll cut. Um, this won't be on our final tip, but I'm just doing this now live with you guys. Um, if you go to our, if you go to, I'm going to show up my desktop real quick. I want to show you this kind of handy tip here about how to route your audio to avoid, you know, to be able to monitor it in more than one place without hearing the echo. So if you, for example, want to play out your video, your audio in a, um, uh, in another device, you can go to your preferences and that will actually um, under the audio interface, you can choose how you want, where you want Wirecast monitors to play out. So this is important. If it's in the built-in output and that's how you're hearing s the Skype caller as well, then you've got a problem because if you're trying to capture that audio, like I said, you'll get that audio loop. But if, for example, you play your Wirecast audio somewhere else, like out through another device or something, then you won't get a loop. Um, you will just need a second set of headphones or some way to hear that audio and then you can hear your guest technically you might hear them twice uh, so maybe you may still want to turn off the monitor but this gives you the option of listening to your Wirecast audio in addition to um, still being able to capture the audio from your your, your built-in device um, the desktop audio capture probably won't work if you have Skype playing out of anything else so unless you're physically capturing your Skype audio through an actual capture card or an audio interface or a line in port, you're routing it out of the machine and back in or um, into a little mixer and then heading it back in, you could do that, um, but you uh, would then capture your audio um, not through that little checkbox in the you know screen capture. Um, and this can help you with audio routing. There's also some cool tools like virtual audio cables, and I believe it was Soundflower on Mac for a long time. I don't know if that's still working or not, but there's virtual ways to route audio. So you can create more outputs and inputs and ways to route your audio. So ideally, you can avoid problems like uh, loopbacks and feedback loops and mixes and so forth. All right. Um, Skype TX says, Adnan, that you're totally right. Um, <laughs> And final question Anth from Anthony, did the virtual camera get fixed in Skype or are you running an old version of Skype? So the virtual camera works with Skype on Mac, no problem. On Windows, um, you Windows 10 in particular, there may be an issue with some of the newer Skype versions where when you try to turn it on in the video in, in Skype, it'll just un deactivate. Uh, but that has been fixed and will be out in the next update. So in the meantime, if you're using Skype, you may not be able to feed your monitor out um, to your Skype guests through Skype for the moment using the virtual camera. So that is one thing to be aware of. Uh, but it's not a, like a necessarily make or break. Another thing you can do is you can always just point a camera, like you can feed out your, your monitor mix to another screen or something using Wirecast external display or something out and then point a camera at that like a little webcam or something and then just put the webcam into Skype so again it's another way to do that and avoid that bug if you're on Windows 10 alright guys I think that covers it thanks for watching today I hope uh, this was helpful we will see you back next week we'll be talking all about how to make great webinars with Wirecast and uh, we'll be doing more Q&A and live comments and stuff like that so tune in for that and I'll see you soon it's been a wrap it's been fun <laughs>